Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Jason Avant, on Inside the Birds platform, the Q&A show, and I'm with my co-host, my friend, my teammate, my homie. Say what's up to the people, Q. What's going on, everybody? Back, back again. Excited for another great show. We always have fun, man. I can't wait to get going, so let's get started. Hey, it's a little bit down today, just a little bit. You know, the birds got clipped a little bit, a little crash landing. A lot to learn mm -hmm. from, a lot of tape to look at, a lot to grow from. Um, we're going to talk about some of the things that, that transpired. But before we do that, we want to say thank you to Adam and to Jeff and to Josh and everyone at Inside the Birds that's making this possible. To you, the fans that are tuning in make sure that you email your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com follow us facebook instagram twitter also um inside the birds youtube channel check us out q you got anything else no let's man nothing going. going on just just let's get life. going <laughs> Let's get going. We, we'll jump right into it. The Eagles lose 20 to 14 to the awful New York Jets, especially on offense. They're, they're, they're pretty good on defense, but definitely on offense. Uh, let's talk about it, man. The offense struggled heavily in this game. There was a lot of questionable play calls, a lot of questionable decisions by the quarterback, a lot of questionable um, just lack of help for J Jack Driscoll. There's a bunch of things that, that transpired. Let's get right into it. The interception, the final interception, uh, when it comes, you know, from a defensive viewpoint, Q, what were you seeing on the last um, interception from Jalen Hurst? Were we being too conservative, too aggressive? What should have been done? Well, I don't know. To me, I just felt, especially the second half of that game, I felt that I mean, really the whole game, but especially in that second half and that final drive, I felt like Jalen has, um, he's starting to develop a habit of trying to make the spectacular play mm -hmm. instead of trying to take what the defense gives you. Um, saw multiple times, you got some underneath check downs, you got some crossing routes. And, um, you know, a couple of them, he, you know, one of the crossing routes uh, later in the game to, um, to Smitty, he threw it so late that he didn't even wouldn't have even had a chance to really make a play. So, you know, what I saw was a quarterback that's trying to push for the big play, trying to push for the win instead of taking what the defense gives you. Now, on that last play, um, the the last interception, I'm talking about the one where they they double they basically doubled um Goddard. I mean, they had they had, they showed, you know, pressure and then they all bailed out. And you have one guy on the inside of the hash and one defender on the outside of the hash. And they basically just sandwiched Goddard. And so to me, that tells me, number one, teams, you know, the book is out. Teams know where he's going. They know where he's going to put his eyes. And they know in a critical down situation what the Eagles, maybe not necessarily what the play is, but what their mindset is and what they're trying to do. And, We've seen it over and over, and it's just starting to kind of pile up where, you know, teams are figuring them out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so I agree with that. Here's the thing, I, and I'm going to address the offense as a whole, but I'm going to address this this question first. Let's talk about that last interception. you got to understand the scenario, the situation, right? It's two minutes to go in the game, right? A little bit mm -hmm. over two minutes to go in the game. You're winning 14 to 12. We don't need – a play at this moment we don't need mm -hmm. a play if the play is there we'll take the play but we don't need it and I I think Jalen Hurts got confused of the situation of the game right yeah. so that's number one so on 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 that play on that particular play you should have known because you're in a two by two you got to go right on the outside. You got a hitch on this side. You got a hitch on the other side. Then to go on the other side, right? So you're running to the sticks. The defense know that you like to run to the sticks. Another thing, too, you have eliminated 
the run game from the repertoire. So now for most of the second half, the defensive linemen, not linemen, but the linebackers, the second levels of the, the, the defense, they're in seven on seven drops the entire time. Mm -hmm. They were dropping back so far. I'm like, what is this? You have to bring them up for any of your pass plays to work. But let's go a little bit further. We've abandoned the run game, so no one's afraid of the run. They're not thinking about the run. They know we want to pass. Yep. You're in a two-by-two. Two, seven defenders out there. They went cover three on that particular play. The guy outside of the hash is the flat defender. The guy that's inside the hash was the hook defender. And your eyes stayed locked on God at the entire time. On that play, if you look at the drop closely on that last interception, Jalen is seeing ghosts. Yep. He had a clean enough pocket to step up and rocket one if he wanted to, even though that would have been a bad decision. But he got to the top of his break and took two steps back, thinking a rush was coming because the rush was coming for most of the second half, and he kind of threw it off his back foot when there was no yep. pressure in his face. Yep. So that it's a lot of things going on. One, there was nobody open on the entire play. That's play call. Two, you didn't run the ball. So now the linebackers are at 10 yards down the field. The second level defenders are 10 yards down the field. Mm -hmm. Three, the quarterback is seeing ghosts and he's throwing it off his back foot. Yep. And he didn't know the situation of the game. We're playing like we're down. That team, mm -hmm. let me give you this. That team scores six points by itself, the Jets. Six points. When they got the ball and drove down the field, they did it twice. Once was a Keely Ringo kick catch interference that put the ball on the plus side of the territory for the so they had a field goal right away. Yeah. And the rest of the 11 points were defensive that were brought to you by the defense. Mm. You get know what I mean? So make yeah. that team drive 80 yards because you have the ball on a 45, 50 yard line. Make that team drive 80 yards to beat you with Zach Wilson. Yeah. All right. So That's true. I'll, I, I'll and, and we're going to touch on different portions and parts of that, but I don't want to, you know, just take the whole conversation. But th it, there's a lot of things you can feel my temperature rising on a lot of these. <laughs> okay. No, man, that's why we're here, man. This yeah. Is therapy. <laughs> thoughts on the thoughts on the turnovers. Q got it. Dropped. Pass interception. Um, DeAndre Swift fumble right before halftime. And that middle eight, it. that middle eight, the last four minutes of the second half, the first four minutes of the third quarter is critical. Mm -hmm. Already mm -hmm. in field goal range, could have went up 17 to three or, or 20, to, uh, you know, 21 to three. Critical. It's a killer, man. Um, then hurts his, you know, interceptions. S Smitty's drop ball, Jack Driscoll, a bunch of stuff going on. Tell me about turnovers. What, which one? Which one? Yeah, which, the, which, which one hurt you the most? Um, I mean, I, to me, the the toughest one, because I I think this play would have would have changed the game. Okay, so I noticed that the the Jets were definitely bringing a, a ton of pressure, especially from Jalen's right. It seemed like their game plan was to bring pressure from his right, make him bring the ball down, keep him in the pocket on the left and try to force his eyes away from the center of the field. And so that play call, um, now it was a tremendous play call by Johnson, um, the screen to um, the Goddard. To Goddard. It, was a, it, was a, it was a great hustle play. He was on the other side of the ball, that was a, that other was side of the field, and he just hustled. By Jermaine Johnson. It, it was awesome. But if you notice on that play, and then you, I'm sure you saw it, they caught him in the blitz. Mm -hmm. And perfect, I think something play. like that can – change the outcome of the game like oh now we're like okay now we can't just send crazy pressures from his right the whole game because they're gonna catch us in the 
in a in a screen. So to me, that was the most heartbreaking because of what it could have meant for the rest of the game. It could have slowed that that rush down. It could have helped our young, you know, offensive lineman. I guess he's a four year player. He's not really young. But it could have helped um, Jack um blanking on this name. Jack Driscoll. Driscoll could have helped Driscoll out, um, slowing that rush down. So to me, that was probably the more critical one. Um, the other play, I mean, sometimes those happen where uh Mosley punched the ball out. Um, you know, that was a hustle play, idea. but to me. It's a yeah. great idea. Most <laughs> of the football players are not thinking about that. You know, they're trying mm-hmm. to make the tackle. Yeah, man. That's like that peanut. Remember it's peanut tillman? That was a peanut Tillman type punch yeah. on that one. Yeah. The um and I, and I'll and I'll jump in here there and I'll explain that play. So on that Dallas Goddard interception, that's the only play that I or, or the only interception that wasn't Jalen's, you know, Jalen's doing. A lot of people think that him getting hit, um, that wasn't his fault. That was 100 percent his fault. And I'm gonna break that down in a second. But on Dallas Goddard's play. There's a couple of things, right? So they catch him in a blitz. They catch him in an all-out blitz. It was a cover zero blitz. They catch him in an all-out blitz. And you can't call a better call than that. That was a great call by Brian Johnson. The center and the guards, they had three linemen out there, both center, uh, the center and both guards to get out in front of it. Jermaine Johnson's on the right side. He's a quote-unquote outside linebacker or defensive end, but they – Though, like, he was, like, they they train their players with the New York Jets. Those are smart football players because he looked like a guy that's been standing up playing linebacker his entire life on that play. He 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 raises up because he is the spy in that, posi- that position. He's the one that's dropping out, right? So the whole mm-hmm. defender in zero hole, that's his, that's his job in that play, to take any shallow cross or anything that's coming out. He looks at Jalen Hurts' eyes and books it over, knowing there's zero pressure, knowing that I don't have to worry about any other responsibility because he won't have time. So I'm going to like go straight for where his eyes is, which was toward Dallas Goddard, and, and makes contact with the ball. Now, what Dallas Goddard can do on that play, once you guys go back and look at it, Dallas Goddard got to recognize it's zero blitz, understanding his relationship between him and alignment and reduce. Hmm. And then you mean right? by reduce, you come back tighter. to the football. Now you change the angle okay. of the guy that's scraping across the, the lineman because he had to go over the top of the lineman in order to meet Dallas Goddard. But if Dallas Goddard is reducing back to the quarterback, that changes his angle. Therefore, there's no interception. You may touch a shoulder pad, but you're definitely going to get the screen, the screen started. Mm. So that's the coaching okay. point on there. Remember, you're playing the, – the coach did his job by designing the play. Now, you as a football player have to evaluate the situation and make the play work. It's the same thing as the construction, right? You have the guy that's the architect or the engineer, whatever it is, they come up with the plan. But the person on the site, the foreman, recognizes, oh, that's a load-bearing wall. We can't do that. We have to make an alteration or adjustment. It's the same thing in football. I call the perfect play, but listen, it's moving parts out there. You have to make it work with the moving parts. Mm-hmm. And him being a veteran player, if he reduces, that's a catch, and that's a big play. And and at the least, it's not an interception. Gotcha. Okay. All there. right. That's that. That's uh, it, oh, man. let me let me let me, yeah. let me go on with a couple more of these, a couple more of these, because this stuff is burning. Me. I gotta get yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. All right. So, um, Jalen Hurts, the interception that Jermaine Johnson clips the, his elbow, and you know it flutters and gets an interception. I talked to you guys about this early in the season. We praised them for the throw. And I told y'all on this show, and I said it on NBC Sports, that you can't hold a ball that long. Jalen Hurts took four hitches on that throw. You don't have time for two hitches in NFL, but he took four four hitches. Ended up getting his, his arm clipped, and the ball flutters. There's an interception. This play was the same exact play that 
um, Lamade Zacchaeus had when he caught a touchdown in Tampa. And I told you guys then, you don't want that play to happen all the time because more times than not, there's going to be interceptions because you're holding the ball too long. He had two guys open right away. That play happened on first and 10. I don't need it. I got Dallas Goddard and I got Swift checked down right there. By the time that second hitch happened, right after that second hitch, I'm checking it down. You're taking too long, AJ. It's just too long. Mm. That's how you play against this defense because this defense literally said, we're going to drop people back. We're going to confuse you in the back end. We're going to confuse you at the front with who's going to be at the line of scrimmage, who's going to blitz, who's not. We're going to do all of that. So this whole game, don't turn it over, run the ball, check it down. Force the Eagles to play a way that they don't want to play. Will they be impatient enough to continue to beat their head against this wall and not adjust? And the Jets chose the right thing because we chose to play our game plan rather than what the game plan that the game dictated. Mm. It's about wins. It's not about stats. It's not about your yards. It's not about throwing it through the air. Whatever game the team is giving you, whatever way to win, the avenue to win that the team is giving you, that's the game you play. Mm. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because, right. you know, if you're looking at the Jets, that's exactly what <sighs> Especially on offense, <laughs> they they took what they took what they what the Eagles gave them, you know, thirteen personnel oh. sets, run the ball, check downs, just a good game plan. They had a good game plan. A punt, a punt, a no, punt is it, our friend. Yeah, <laughs> a punt is our friend. Who Zach 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 Wilson didn't do much in the game, but he didn't turn it over. <laughs> I hate I hate having to put praise this guy. You get what I mean? Uh, but that, that was it. The yeah. team didn't turn it over. Yeah, that was a difference. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, so let's move on. Go ahead, go ahead. <sighs> All right, so we kind of touched on a little bit. You know, Lane Johnson got hurt. I haven't heard much about, um, you know, his status for, you know, next week and moving forward. But like Jack Driscoll came brain. It was a high ankle sprain. Ooh. It looks like a high ankle sprain. And, and what that means is that it's probably going to be out a couple weeks. Go ahead. Yeah, those are no joke. They take a long time to recover. Um. So, yeah, so Jack Driscoll, come, Jack, Jack Driscoll comes into the game. Mm -hmm. What was your thoughts on him? Because I have my thoughts, but I, I want to see what you have to say first. Well, let's, let's talk about this. With 13 and 23 when Lane doesn't play, now with 13 and 24 when Lane is not playing. So it's a big deal. And that right there should let you know that when Lane doesn't play, we don't normally win. And if we're not winning, I need to help him. And I don't think the Eagles did a good job at all. They totally avoided that, that, that part of the game plan. So here's a couple ways you can help him. Run it. Every offensive lineman loves a, loves some some run action, right? Give them an opportunity to to get their licks back on the defensive ends and the the, the defensive tackles, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you do pass it, you send protection to his side, whether it's a running back, whether there's a chip, whether there's something, especially in critical downs and third downs and situations like that. Yeah, of course you do. So, did he struggle? Yeah, he struggled. He struggled. In the critical play late in the game, I believe it was the it wasn't the last play, but it was it was a critical play in, in the last possession where he just didn't get off on the snap at all. The guy was around him and and all of yeah. them, you know, one second, you know, so different things like that, you know. So, but I don't expect him to be Lane Johnson. That's why you go in and help him. Can, can he do better? Yeah, but you got to help him do better. Mm -hmm. You got to do what the Jets did for, you know, Tay Hayes and 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 and, and um and, and Craig James. Like I said, Craig James. I can't remember his name right now. Yeah, I'm Jeff, looking him up right now. Jeff, help me out. Kind of. Um, but yeah, you gotta you gotta. Beckton, Mike um, Max Mitchell. 
No, the receiver, no, the the, the cornerback. But no, no, the cornerback. But yeah, oh, so, okay. oh, so okay. but anyhow, yeah. The, yeah, the so they got you gotta do the same thing. You you play a lot of zone, you go man selectively, you keep help over the top, you make them play off, you know, things like that. Stay on top. That's that's that that was their game plan to protect those guys. And the same thing for the offensive line. What about you? Yeah, I was saying the same thing. I mean, give him a chip, give him a tight end on his side, give him some help. I was almost having flashbacks, and I hate to always bring this up like every year, but the, the game when Winston Justice um, ended up having to start, mm -hmm. and OC Unora, the Giants, yeah. and they had a, they set a record, you know, eight sacks in the game. Yeah. And I remember being on that team and on the sideline, like, give him some help. Yeah, he can't block. <laughs> give him some help. Give him some help. You know, and you know, to me, the 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 biggest the biggest thing that I realized was was the bull rush. I mean, they were right down the center and putting him in into uh, Jalen's pocket mm -hmm. every single time he dropped back to pass the ball. And I think that that kind of snowballed into what we saw later in the game when he was seeing ghosts because he. <laughs> He was getting goals. I mean, there was every – it was almost every snap he dropped back, there was some type of pressure coming from his right, and it was right over Driscoll. So, you know, we definitely need to start helping him out there. And, you know, and and I think the most important part is what you said, run the ball. You have to run the ball, especially in a game like that, in a situation like that. You have to run the ball to give yourself an opportunity to win the game and to keep your quarterback upright. Yeah, 100%. Um, we skip. We kind of skipped over this. Um, no, we no. Here you go. It, it, we can go right to the fan question, Q. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah so this question is from Dashell Dashell H. I feel like we have seen a lot of miscues between Jalen Hurts and various receivers. What can you tell us about the pre-sound communication and the new OC? Hmm. I guess I'll leave that one. Me. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, this this will this will be you, but I I I got something that I need to say about it. Okay, you want me to go first? Yeah. So I I don't like. I think sometimes Brian Johnson makes some really good calls, but I don't like a lot of his calls, and I, and the reason why I don't like it. Okay, you're playing a team with two starting cornerbacks out. You were running way too many bunch sets. You're bringing all the defender you into these bunch sets where all their better defenders are. Their linebackers and their D line is really what the core what they do. And so I don't like all of the bunch sets. I think like like I've said it before, you know, people may not know this, but Peyton Manning rarely, rarely ever had a, a different formation other than two by two. It was either, you know, he'll have uh, Marvin Harrison on one side, Dallas Clark on the other side, straight two by two. And what that does is it allows your quarterback to see the whole field, see what the, what the defense is doing, see the routes where the open areas are. And also, it keeps the defense honest. When the team is in two by two, you can't really hide too much. If you're blitzing, you're going to show it. So I, I, I'm not a big fan of all the condensed sets. I know sometimes you got to do that to get the guys off the press and take some deep shots down the field. But I just I feel, I feel like now I would love to chart the the play uh, productivity when we're in those condensed sets versus when they're in spread sets and like traditional trips or two by two formations because I think our offense is way better. I think Jalen is way more comfortable when our offense is spread out so he can see everything. And not only that, it creates way more lanes. When you bring the guys in tight like that, it makes it easier, I think, for the linebackers to get their hands on the receivers, slow everything down, and it makes it harder on the quarterback. So I'm not a huge fan of it. So to me, that's the biggest thing that I'm seeing from this new OC that I'm not really, I'm not really loving. Yeah. Well, I, for this game, I, I understand you. And I get it for this game because you want to be individual routes on their backups. Yes. At corner because DJ Reed or Sauce Gardner didn't play. So you want to run individual routes on the outside the entire game in order to win. That's what you want. Yeah. 
I think the teams that understand the bunches and the motions and stuff like that, they do better. It's easier to pass out of that stuff. However, the quarterback has to understand exactly what the defense is doing. And I think that um, this defense, and because they were able to move on a snap in the back end, they were able to confuse cover two, cover four, cover six, and cover three. The only time you could tell what they were in, for the most part, was when they went man or like, with a lot of pressure. That's the only time you could tell what they were in. Like, it was tough for me to recognize, like, what coverage are they in? I had to go back and look at it twice. You know, mm-hmm. and they did, and their, in their middle three, like, when they say, when their safety comes down, their nickel, their linebackers, those guys, like, their middle four, when they go over four over three and stuff like that, they do that amazing. They pass off, um, like, um, like, they're well coached. You know what it is? Because they only run three or four coverages. They yeah. they manipulate which of these six are going to rush up front because they'll drop out an end, they'll drop out a tackle, they'll drop out somebody else and bring different guys. So that rotates. But everybody, when either when they're dropping out in coverage and they're linebacker or defensive end, they know exactly what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And they know when to pass off, you know? So here's my thing about the, the receivers and... And, you know, Brian Johnson. Like, the question was, um, miscues. The miscues this game from the receivers is, let's say, sometimes we miss signals. That's happened a few times over a few games. We missed some signals, quarterback to receiver. We missed some signals. Jalen has the ability to change plays. They're giving him more responsibility. So we've seen some miscommunication when it comes to giving signals. In this particular game, one play that kind of like that kind of makes me kind of makes me frustrated and mad on the last drive of the game. It was a first and 10. A.J. Brown, Jalen Hurts miss him on a shallow cross. Oh. High on a shallow cross. Part of the reason he gets missed, Jalen should have just, Jalen floated the ball when he could just throw it. There was nobody in his lane. He didn't have to throw it over anybody. He could have just threw the ball. The other thing is, is that A.J. Brown's a veteran receiver. It's zone. It's cover three. And cover three, there's a flat defender. Right? Mm -hmm. So you stop on a shallow cross and zone. You stop and hook up rather than keep running. That's why Jalen Hurts was late throwing you the ball because he sees the defender behind you thinking that you're going to stop. And you should have stopped three steps earlier than that, and now you got a 15-yard gain because you can cut up inside the flat defender. Little things like that. So that right there is just a mis, a miscommunication. Like, and that's, that's just a veteran receiver just not doing the right things in that moment. Yeah. Devontae Smith. You can't be frustrated about not getting the ball and you get opportunities to come up and you don't show up. You got to show up. And I know he's a young player and he was dealing with demons. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there where you drop a pass and it's in your head and you got to go to the next play. And he, and, and he caught some, he caught some, some balls. But that 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 one on here here's how this went. They turn the ball over, right before halftime. Mm-hmm. They come out in the sec the the next drive, and they, I think, it's Devonte Smith drops the ball on the first fifteen. They get sacked and they get into a long third down. They had to punt it. Then the next drive, 
um, Kenneth Gainwell drops a third down pass right in the numbers on the sideline after Jalen got out and made a play. The next play after that, Keely Ringo gets a, a kick catch interference. Right, so three straight drives all are bad doing. Nothing the Jets did are bad doing. Like different things like that. And and Brian Johnson calls some great games sometimes. The game plan just wasn't good for this particular team. So my 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 thing with with Brian Johnson, the OC, the new OC, is not the communication in the pre-snap. It's it's and I think he wants to do it, but I think he gets pressure. This is me speculating because there's no way that you can come from the Vikings game where DeAndre Swift was running the ball all over that team. And then now you can barely get this man touches the next couple of games without there being something said. Yeah. You just you just don't go from one extreme to the other extreme. Let me tell you why. Just, yeah, the Jets were out two starting corners, but they're ranked 29th in the league in rushing defense. Mm. So whether that's the offensive coordinator, whether that's the organization and, and their philosophy of running and passing, throw all of that out of the way window and do what's best to win on Sunday and if that's Brian Johnson calling more runs then do that and if he wants to call more runs trust him and let him do that if you're not allowing him to that's my thing I'll say word up <laughs> <laughs> oh man every year All every right, year guys. we have the conversation <laughs> I swear, I feel like every year that there's gonna be there's at least one game like that. <laughs> We're like, what the heck is going on? It's it's <laughs> it's 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 the old. It's the same thing they did to the Chiefs. They know the Chiefs want to run. They want to pass the ball, and you just you say, look, man, you got to beat us some other way. And if you too hard here, we're gonna we're gonna. This is the best part of our defense. The best part of our team is our defense. It's the best part. And if you don't adjust, we're going to beat you. And we refuse. We just like, man, I'm going to keep running into this, this steel wall. It's going to open. We're going <laughs> to break it down. No, it's not. It ain't going anywhere. Because yeah. we never lost to them in, right. in ever. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, yesterday. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right. We're excited to let you know about Inside the Tape with our friend Greg Cosell and our former teammate, the fastest, biggest bicep, biggest chest teammate <laughs> we ever had in Clay Harbor. Check out Inside the Tape. Those guys do a great job breaking down the tape, giving you uh, insights and, and information that's uh, good for a barbershop conversation, good for any football conversation, check Greg Cosell and Clay Harbor out. Um, yeah, do that all inside the Birds platform. It airs every Thursday, just to let you guys know. Nice. <laughs> all right. So look, we, we got to tra we got we got to transition to defense. Q. So I'm yeah. going to ask these questions because I'm I want to hear your opinion on these things. Mm -hmm. All you this whole time. No, you know. Right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, <laughs> were the Eagles love it? Were the Eagles um too risky when it comes to you know having you know say two safeties in the game, Reed, Blankenship, Terrell Edmonds? Like, were they too ri risky? Like by not having more safeties up and available and ready for the game? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, that was a huge risk. And, you know, the team is already, you know, the, we're getting bit by the, the injury bug pretty bad. Um, you know, I, I do think Reeds is a, a good young talent. Um, I'm not really sold on Edmonds. Um, so <laughs> that right there in itself, to me, um, is kind of, you know, a reason for concern. But, you know, Reed goes down and, you know, they have to put a, a, a – rookie cornerback in at safety you know and 
And maybe it could be a little bit of overconfidence. You know, hey, we can just get through this game. We never lost to this team. It could be that. Um, you know, Zach Wilson, and he's not this, he's not that. But, you know, here we are today. And um, to me, I, th I thought it was extremely risky. Um, and, you know, hopefully they, you know, make some better better, cho better choices up there. But the other issue is who's who's even out there? Who's available as a safety right now? I mean, there's – Sidney Brown's oh, hurt. Malcolm. Blanket, Blanket, yeah, Blankenship is hurt. Uh, everybody's hurt. We got Terrell Edmonds. Justin Evans yeah. is hurt. Uh, yeah. That's Sidney Brown. Brown's hurt. Yeah, Sid, I said that. Yeah, Sidney Brown's hurt. Oh, you did? My yeah, bad. Justin my Evans. Bad. All, yeah, all, all of them hurt. And so, you know, I, I think that was a huge risk. Um, but again, you know, if I could bring me in. <laughs> you, you, ready, you ready to get back, Q? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the days are over. Don't don't call me. I, they wouldn't call me anyway. But don't, don't call me because uh, those days are over. But no, honestly though, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not I'm not a huge fan on it. Yeah, That's it. yeah. So so I, I I agree with you. It was definitely risky. We definitely got to go out and, and and get someone. They're scouring the whole NFL for defensive backs right now. Um, guys that played last year that are free agents and also guys that are, are um, available in trade. So I'm pretty sure how he's doing his due diligence may be a week too late, but at the same time, um, I'm pretty sure that he'll get a, a someone that's that, that, that'll be ready to play in these next few games. We're going to need a bunch of it going against the Miami Dolphins. So, Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, so Here's the here here's the thing that that we got to give a lot of shout out to because it's not um, taken for granted. The defensive line got after got after it. Uh, Hassan Reddick's two and a half sacks. We were able to sack them six times, right? So yeah. um, we were getting after it defensively. They only they really only gave up six points, and yeah. and it's just a shame that our offense you know gave that game away that game especially all the injuries we had, they were still pitching a shutout up front. Defensive line was getting after guys were flying around. There was opportunities. The cornerbacks played well, you know, so uh, they gave up a few yards to Garrett Wilson. That's going to happen. Um, he's a really good young player, but the defense came up to, 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 to play. They did. They, and, and, and uh, so dang, yeah. you hate to see a freaking six point you know your defense give up basically six points, fourteen points as a as a team, and uh, or or twenty points as a team, you still lose. You know that's that's just a shame. It really is. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a the more you think about it, the more frustrated you get. And uh, you know, this yeah. is you know when when you're you're trying to make that run, these are games that you have to win. You know. Yeah. Next week. Next week it's gonna be a far different game than this week. So, you yeah. know, you know, Jets team with some injuries. This is a game you gotta win. Yeah. So. Let's take a quick let's take a question from Chris D. What did you think of the plan to rotate linebackers between the Kobe Dean, Nick Morrow, and Zach Cunningham? Did you agree with that decision? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, obviously the Kobe Dean's he's the clear starter there. Um, he's he's kind of on a pitch count. You know, you can't just throw him to the wolves. So, you know, the rotation there, I think, is more out of necessity for his, you know, his coming off the injury. I will say this. I mean, he's he's good in coverage, N'Kobe Dean. I mean, it's a clear difference when he's in the game and he's dropping and getting into the passing lanes, um, you know, and, and he can run. And, you know, I do think Morrow and I, and I like Cunningham sometimes. I think they both, you know, have some talent. I think they both make some plays when we need it. They're, they're more of, um, especially, um, um, you know, Cunningham, he's, he's more of a downhill, um, you know, run stopper type player, at least in my eyes. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I think you have to do what you have to do when you're getting your, your, you know, young, young guy back there. So, um, you know, when you have this front, this is, I mean, this front is ridiculous. When you have a front that's good, you can almost, I wouldn't say you can't just put anyone back there in linebacking core, but 
you can get away with it for a few games. Yeah, I think Nick, I think Nick Nicholas, um, you know, Nick Morrow had his opportunity last week versus the Rams. If he come down with those two, those two turnovers, the one that he dropped and the fumble recovery, I think that would have been that would have changed a lot of things, right? Because now you're talking about a guy with sacks the week before and a guy with turnovers. I think people would have been calling him. It's like, yo, we can't take this guy out. Um, but again, remember the NFL is about potential and about futures. So they have leverage, you know, Nicobe Dean with draft picks and, and and put stock in him. So they're going to give him every opportunity to thrive until Nick Morrow like solidifies himself in there. And he had an opportunity last week with those two turnovers to solidify himself and to make it a a, a, a public opinion. Like the same thing we said with DeAndre Swift. You know, when he came in and balled, yeah. the fan, he balled so strong. The fans are like, dude, this dude can't come out. And now the Eagles look crazy. The same way with Nick Morrow had that opportunity. He was allergic to the ball last week. And here comes N'Kobe Dean back in there. That's just, the, that's just the nature of the beast. When you get your opportunity, you better seize it. <laughs> Said he allergic to the ball. Oh, he was allergic to the that's ball. Oh, bloody. <laughs> He's playing good though. I, you know, yeah. I'm just saying that those two plays probably would have would put a, put the fans in and and made it a more pressure situation for Nicobe Dean if he would have did that. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Sorry, moving along. All right. Let's let's talk about the the Jets offense a little bit because you know going into this, I was expecting to be you know turnover city. Didn't turn out that way. We got five sacks. I think it was. Um, but yeah, no turnovers. Five and a half. Go ahead, keep going. Was it five and a half sacks? Um, what did you see from secondary that didn't allow for us to get you know more turnovers? Five sacks. Yeah. Was it five? Yeah, five sacks. What did I see from the secondary that that didn't? Uh, they they played a conservative game. They didn't. You know, Zach Zach Wilson was. Like, dude, if I'm going to get sacked, I'm going to protect the football. That's still a good thing, right? So for this defense that they have with the Jets, which is a pretty good defense, especially pass defense, he's as long as you don't turn it over, they told him that a punt is a good thing. <laughs> like a punt is okay. We don't a punt is a football play that we that we don't mind. And his job was just to not to turn it over and he protected the football he didn't put the ball in harm's way much at all and uh so i don't the only thing that the eagles could have got was a strip sack but he heard that ball he he it was sometimes where the sack was coming from three yards away like this and he is holding the ball like this before it even got to him I was like, boy, you could do anything, but you just stood there. He's like, as long as y'all don't get the ball, I don't care. That's what they told him in the locker room before the game. Just don't give up the ball. He's like, okay, sack, a sack, a sack is okay, Zach. A punt is okay. Just don't turn the ball over. That was the game plan for him. Fair enough. <laughs> I I still I don't know, man. I'm I'm still trying to figure out this the secondary um at times they look great at times they just look i hate to say the word soft but they, they play soft they're in 13 personnel and bradbury's off at like eight yards all day that's slant all day that's bubble that's not pass all day i just to me i just wish because here's the thing to me and we've said it before is like just because you are in press or just because you are in, in, um, I guess I should flip that. It, just because you're playing off doesn't mean you have to play soft. And that means you can play off coverage, but still play aggressive. You can play off coverage, but the receiver runs a slant. You can be somewhere in the vicinity when he catches the ball. Let's get a, yeah. a, a tackle right there. So to me, it's frustrating. I did see at times that we did play, play a little more pressure. We did play a little bit more press. We did get our hands on receivers, but I just feel like time and time after again, we just we just allow for these easy releases by the, the receiving core of other teams, and it's almost like they don't have confidence in themselves. It's almost like the secondary, the some of the corners. And I did see Joe 
Job, you know, press and, and even on the the long throw on the sideline when he was impressed yeah, on Job. That was a great play. That was good coverage. Yeah, it's great, it's that had to be, play. I mean, a perfect pass, right? And and I'm not saying you have to do it every time, but you got a young quarterback that's not really that good right now. Make him beat you. Don't don't let don't let it be so easy for him to make these completions. Now he only he only had a hundred I think one hundred eighty six yards, so yeah. it wasn't that big a deal. But next week is going to be a different story, and one of the things that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pick and choose when you're going to play tight coverage, and you're going to have to pick and choose when you're going to play off, and it's probably not going to matter because they have so much speed on this Miami Dolphins team, but you still have to make the quarterback be perfect to beat you. And so I think this was another great opportunity against a young quarterback that isn't, isn't solidified yet to practice and mm -hmm. work on your technique and make him make plays to win the game. Yeah, I agree with you. I got nothing nothing to follow up with that. I, I agree with you. I just, Well, I will say this. When you don't trust the way you run, you tend to play a little bit off. True. You got to be able to trust your speed. The guys that are willing to come up there is guys that you look. It don't matter what you do. You're not running by me. Yeah, and that's the thing. And I just think that that we don't we don't have a bunch of guys that are confident in how 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 well they run. And that's it. Um, did the Eagles let Bryce Hall intentionally score in their late touchdown to get the ball back? Yep. If so, did the Jets uh, almost screw that up by scoring too quickly and not force? It? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Hundred <laughs> percent. I was mad at the lineman for not letting the dude score on the pick six. I said, I was talking about situational foot. Come on, that's me yelling at the screen. Let him score. Let him score. Let that's me yelling at the screen. Like let him score. Let him score. I know everybody's like, no. I'm like, let him score. I'm literally yelling at that. My kids are like, man, what are you talking about? <laughs> as soon as he as soon as he picked it, I'm like, let him score, let him score, let him score. I know I had played the situation in my mind. That's good. <laughs> I was cursing, I was cursing so loud, dogs was barking at me. <laughs> it was going off. I didn't even realize the situation. So yeah, that, that's good. Uh, good attest to you, but yeah, man. <sighs> Yeah, they all they they could have they could have bl blown it because they were on they were down. They could have blown it. They could have blown it. You know, because they were they, they were down two. And the Eagles had two timeouts. And uh and 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 a little less than two minutes to go, they could have they could have ran down a lot of that clock. Or at least yeah. uh, how the Eagles, you know, use all of their timeouts, and that's the thing. But the Eagles really got a chance to get the ball back because they had two timeouts, so they would they could have got it down to a minute. The Eagles probably would have got the ball back with both their timeouts at about a minute to go. But there's no guarantee that you're going to score a touchdown, and that's why the Jets took it because there's no guarantee you're going to score a touchdown, and therefore you kick a field goal. Now you up one. Now the Eagles got the ball with a minute left and no timeouts. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I I just I know that's the right play. I just I wonder like in our playing days, like I know Doc wouldn't have uh let let them score. Like I don't think try like guys like that. I think it's it's hard and I understand it and trust me, I get it. It's mm -hmm. just hard to ask people like that, players like that to let let a team score. Mm -hmm. But uh I hear you. You you're trying to win though. You're trying to win, know, especially if you got no time. Like especially you got no timeouts. No, like one time uh, out. Yeah, you're done. Like if you don't, I, I get it. And that's just the offensive player talking to a defensive player. You guys are yeah. built different, man. Yeah, just yeah, just give us. <laughs> we, the ball we're back. just not smart over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just give us the ball back. <laughs> um, okay, let's 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 get to going. Um, yeah. How worried are you about? the Dolphins with our banged up secondary cue. Absolutely. hundred percent worth <laughs> um, this, this team. I mean, they, they dropped 70 on, on, uh, on Denver. So the, the big play potential is there. Tua is playing at a high level. He's getting week. the ball out fast. 
42 last week. Um, the 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 one thing that I will say is this front, if there was ever a week for them to bring their A game, it's this week mm-hmm. because they're going to need everyone 100%. The, the thing I like about, and I won't go too long on this, but the thing I like about this Miami Dolphins offense is like it's it's crazy, man. They they run the same play from so many different looks, and it looks different every single time. Two is getting the ball out fast, getting the ball out to his playmakers. They have so much speed. It's gonna be tough, man. It's just gonna be a tough game. But I I think if this defensive line can get after two early, get him uncomfortable, get him off his spot. If they're not gonna get their rush there, get your hands up in them passing lanes get some deflections, I think that could be the difference in this game because our secondary, we're so banged up right now and there's so much speed, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. So we're going to need our front to really come ready to go. Yeah, and and this is what I'll say is that we have to... We have to be able to stop the wrong six defenders. Yeah. So so Jordan Davis, hopefully Jalen... Carter's back. Um, you know, Fletch, Milton Williams, these guys have to ball out. And cause because we can't we can't have multiple guys at the line of scrimmage trying to defend the run game. This is not that game. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna need just like the Jets did to us, rushing four and seven back. That's what that's what that's the game plan the entire game. And if you are uncomfortable playing cover two and putting your hand on people, like because it's not a, it's not good enough to play too high safety. The underneath people better touch somebody. Absolutely. You better reroute every, every these play. <laughs> or you, you can play. cancel this game right now. You better turn into the 2007, 2008 New England Patriots. <laughs> That's what you better turn into right now in order to 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 get this win. Um, so the underneath coverage has to be great when it comes to rerouting, and we got to be able to stop the run with six defenders because Miami likes to run the ball and, and they get big chunk plays. They got a guy he may not play this game, but you know it's still worth saying averaging twelve point one yard is a carry. Crazy. Talk about 30, 38 rushes, 12, 12. Yeah, a eight, chain. Eight, eight chain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane, man. Yeah. Right. And and, and, and then mo and most of us having six yards of carry, 5.7. Right. Crazy. So and that's because you have to commit so many people to the secondary that you, that, that they're able there's easy running lanes, but we're gonna have to do what most teams haven't been able to do. And that stopped the run with six defenders. Great. And I think they can do that. I hope so. In order to stop the run with six <laughs> defenders, you got to have some willing corners, though, Q. And you know at times because yeah. you can get to the edge if you got six people in there. And the person that can, the person that needs to show up is going to be the cornerbacks. And our cornerbacks haven't been the most, you know, the best tacklers in the world. Oh, man. Yeah, talk, you can talk uh, about your boy. You can talk about your boy, Q. I'm going to let you talk about your boy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? The the offense Ooh. coordinator, the head coach. Oh. Mike Redan. Yeah, no, I'm – this is – all right, so this is my yeah. questions for you. In the NFL, and let's say current. It don't have to be current, but let's – give me your top three. This is the end of the show, people. We're doing something different each week. So I, I brought this idea. I want to know Jason's top three offensive coordinators of all time and why. Of all time? Yeah. Or right now. Or you know what? Let's let's go right now. Yeah, let's yeah. go right you now. You gotta give me more time because that's my first time hearing yeah, this question to go all time. That wasn't fair. That wasn't yeah, fair. All right. So so currently in the in the NFL, the top offensive coordinators, uh Kyle Shanahan. Let's see. Number one. Okay. Um and and why? 
just because he's able to put guys in positions to win and it's hard it's a defense it's a a defensive nightmare with formations what makes his offense different from from you know Mike Mike McDaniel and you know Sean McVay is that he used way more personnel changes and switches guys in in different spots he still uses motion and they're always putting a guy in limbo that's in a position that um that you know that that's not in that that's not in that position like so he'll have you know a linebacker covering Tyree Kill or a linebacker covering Debo something like that you know so I, so I love that so number 1 number 2 I'll call it number 2 cuz I, I I how am I forget about my man Andy Andy's number 1 <laughs> by, by far Big Red's number 1 sorry about that coach Andy's <laughs> number 1 Kyle number 2 Mike down in Miami number 3 Okay, I'll go that way. And the reason, and the reason I'll say Big Red is, is, is that I've never, I've never gone into a game, co- playing for him, where I felt like we were underprepared for the opposing defense. Not during my time. If we lost. It was because we played bad. It wasn't because the the, the game plan was bad. Mm. Okay. And he was the and, and 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 out of all the coaches that I named, he's going to allow the players to play the most. You mean off like and that's part of like create their own stuff, like they do a little bit in in dude, Kansas City. Dude, dude. Travis Kelsey don't the him and him and Mahomes the re, the reason they score so much score so much is because they have the they have the red light they have the green light, mm-hmm. just like Dame like 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 Damian Lillard can shoot it from anywhere. Steph Curry got the green light. <laughs> Those two got the green light, and he gives it only to a certain few. But he he's one of those that, that give you creativity within what he's asking you to do, in comparison to the other coaches. I love it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Boom. That's we'll you do guys. coordinators. Yeah, I'm gonna get you for defense coordinators. Okay, we'll do it next week. I'm gonna get you de- 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 get your defense coordinator next week. <laughs> yeah, Sh- Sean yeah. McVay's close. Yeah, he's close. He's close. Sean McVay's close, but he's not up there yet. I think um, he's overrated. I- uh, not the way he was working us out this first half last week. We caught up to it. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hey, guys, we want to say Let's thank you guys for tuning into the Q&A podcast. Make sure you check us out, InsideTheBirds at gmail.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Inside the Birds YouTube channel, the Q&A show. I'm Jason Avon. Thank you guys for tuning in. Q has the last word. As always, man, it's been a pleasure. I love, I love this show, man. I love coming on with you and learning so much. I learn stuff every time. I can say it all the time, man. But until next week, folks, hopefully we come back with a big win over the Dolphins. Defense shut them down. You think we, we got you, you think you think we're gonna win, Q? I think we can win. We don't oh, have to score, that's though. not we too go. much confidence right there. We're gonna end the show on that. <laughs> Q doesn't believe in the Eagles. That's the that's that. I'm gonna get him next week.